Hello everyone! Well, in this video, we're going to talk about the Xbox Series X graphics and expectations. And well, from what I've read, comments from users in different uh, gaming websites and on YouTube, I think some people were very excited, but other ones were quite disappointed with what they've seen. Now, the thing is, if you just search for a uh, um, Xbox Series X performance uh, compared to a PC, you're going to find many articles. For example, uh, one on uh, PCGamer.com says, on paper, the GPU in the Xbox Series X is faster than the GeForce RTX 2080 Super. Another one on PC Games uh, SN uh, uh, says in the title, AMD's Xbox Series X GPU offers the same processing power as an RTX 2080 Ti. Now, although we don't know the exact price of the Xbox Series X, uh, some suggest that it will cost, well, at least uh, 500 uh, US dollars uh, when it launches. But considering the power that we are talking about in comparison to a PC, this is a cheap price. I mean, this allows people uh, who don't actually have powerful PCs to jump into uh, gaming with high-end uh, graphics and everything that comes with it. And I'm talking for ex from experience because when I bought my PS4, the reason I bought the PS4, because I had such a terrible PC that really, it was so terrible that I played like, I think, Battlefield 3 with uh, like really 15 frames per second or something like that, maybe a bit more. And it, it was a terrible experience, but that's what I had. And after that, I wanted to kind of enjoy gaming, you know, like they should be played. And uh, I bought the console, I bought the PS4. And since then things changed completely. Now, even now when I own a laptop and not uh, like this best one, I have a uh, laptop, a uh, Legion, Lenovo Legion with a 1660 GTX Ti uh, graphics card still, it's tempting to get the Xbox Series X because it's going to be more powerful and you're going to support ray tracing, 4K and things that my um, PC probably won't be able to handle. And we need to consider that this is for a much lower price point. So it's very tempting to get it even if you get, you have a good PC. I mean, by saying good, I mean something like around, uh, uh, you know, 1050 Ti and above that can support some of the latest game with good frame rates, maybe not the highest quality, but you know, with high quality. Uh, yeah. Now, of course, when you see this type of comparison compared to PC uh, GPUs, uh, well, the expectation is very high. Uh, if a developer decide to target the Xbox Series X and create a, a game that is exclusive, at least a launch exclusive uh, to the Xbox Series X console, uh, well, we can expect games to look absolutely amazing. But the thing is that in reality, when you look at the old, you know, many games, for example, on Steam, you can see that the minimum, there is a minimum requirements the game can run. Of course, you can run it in lower settings, but you don't see like games that are kind of uh, developers uh, put a minimum requirement of 2080. Right? We know VR games have a minimum requirement because of the technology limitation. I mean, you can't really, uh, if you want to run VR games you, and with you know, good frame rates, uh, you need uh, um, a PC with uh, at least 1060 in order to kind of uh, uh, play the game in uh, how the developer wants you to play in a very good frame rates. Now, the thing is, when I look at uh, those Xbox Series X games, I thought these will be available for uh, PC as well. So, in fact, the Xbox Series X is just a very, very powerful PC and in a very affordable price. Now, that's where I actually have a problem. So, if a developer releases it, the games and they're going to release the game both on the Xbox Series X and both on the PC, well, I guess they want to be able to uh, have a large audience to play the game. Especially if it's a multiplayer, you want a large play base. So if you limit it and you just put the uh, bare minimum of, for example, just saying just 2080, you really cut off a large amount of player who won't be able to play the game unless they are on the console or they own a high-end PC. But we can exclude the option there will be like an exclusive for the Xbox Series X which might be also be available for PC, I and PC, which will the, the developer will be put effort to make the game kind of uh, mind blowing, uh, which will require uh, uh, a very good high end uh, graphic cards 
and uh, you know to really deliver the experience that the developer want to deliver now this thing is that i already found a kind of a, a game like that and this is the medium uh, the developer is a, a blobber team and uh, if you look at Steam, if you just search for the medium, you can see the system requirements, it listed the graphics card, the minimum, not talking about the recommended, all right? The minimum is uh, 1060 GeForce GTX, which is six gigabytes, or AMD Radeon R9 390X. So this is the minimum, right? Minimum uh, hardware requirement, but this is a lot, right? This is the minimum that you need for uh, virtual reality, if you want to experience virtual reality games. Well, at least when I'm talking about Oculus Rift or uh, HTC Vive. Anyway, the point is that some of those developers, and I think we're going to see many games like that, that will try to create a different genre, a game that stand out from the rest, and they put, uh, they will need to take advantage of this processing power. For example, in the medium, they create two power awards that exist at the same time. They are rendered at the same time and can just alternatively switch between them without actually having load the screen or any delays. Uh, so again, this is something unique, and I expect uh, companies, I think there are many companies only working on next-gen games that take advantage of the very powerful output of the, both the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. And if they bring it to the PC, those requirements will still remain. So, uh, uh, I mean, this game that I'm talking about is still will be available for the Xbox One, but we can expect it to be much less kind of, you know, uh, fancy compared to the uh, uh, other versions. But just imagine a game that was designed specifically for the Xbox Series X, the same can I can say for the PlayStation 5, of course, a dedicated game that will run only on that console and it will be fully optimized for that console. So no downgraded version, no need to spend time or trying to optimize it for other consoles. So development can put all the effort in order to create kind of really amazing experience that takes advantage of every single bit of power that the Xbox Series X can offer. Now, the thing that you see here is from uh, Aloe Infinite uh, in front of you right now. And I've read people being very disappointed uh, from what they've seen and some of them, they're very good uh, analysis of the visual uh, uh, quality that they've seen in the trailer. And the, for them, there are many things actually missing. And the thing just looks from like previous Halo games. And considering the fact that this game will be for with us for 10 years to come, we won't see like another Halo every year or every two or every three years. Uh, they're just gonna continue to update this uh, Halo Infinite game. Uh, people were disappointed because they want a game that looks like an next gen and especially when we are talking about Halo franchise. But the thing is that I mentioned this in the previous video, uh, you know, sometimes you're gonna get kind of a degraded uh, uh, visuals because maybe of the intent to expand it, things into the environment and they kind of been kind of a room to grow in terms of processing power. We can't like utilize everything and create something really amazing, especially when you see that in this case, this is an open world, there are lots of um, uh, 3D models there. Uh, I'm not saying they can be better, and this is from what I've heard, uh, by the way, uh, not from the official source. Uh, this is a, pre a kind of a previous build, this is not a final version, so we can't really judge it right now. Maybe it's going to be better when it released, but I kind of a doubt it's going to see like a huge difference. Now, that being said, I understand that people, will, you know, with all the studios, game studios that Microsoft own, uh, we expect them to actually uh, create like a title that really kind of uh, showcase uh, the power of the console. Now, the other thing is that, well, I have something to talk about here. Well, I've seen Unreal Engine 5 demo and it was just mind blowing. And, you know, if you read the specs and some of the technical uh, things about this engine, you can see this is very capable engine. So it's not just the hardware that we are talking about, but also the game engine. And, you know, we, we've seen uh, companies upgrading the game engine for their games in order to deliver a you know, better visual experience and probably other improvements on the way regarding to sound, etc. But Unreal Engine 5 really showcased like what next-gen games could have looked like and the demo was just mind-blowing and by the way uh i've just read a bit on the web and uh uh Halo infinite is being developed and reading it on google developed by 343 industry using the new sleep space engine um and on uh videogameschronicle.com it says Halo infinite is the most cutting edge engine on the planet claims architect well but 
Unreal Engine 5 is from a company who developed game engine, this, their game engine for years. And you know, the question is, are the two compared? I'm, I'm not qualified to kind of say that, but from what I've seen, Unreal Engine 5 just was amazing when they demo it on the PlayStation 5. And it seems like that if they've used Unreal Engine 5, maybe they could have pulled out something more impressive visually. But again, I don't know, but it just seems like the demo, the demo the, the, on the PlayStation 5 with uh, Unreal Engine 5 will just look uh, kind of uh, super realistic and just blind blowing in every single way, including volumetric lighting, very high detailed uh, 3D models uh, uh, with textures, eye polygons. It just looks mind blowing. You can just search it on YouTube or on my channel. You can actually see uh, the demo and I was talking about it. Uh, and it just seems like something kind of missing here, you know, I mean, Maybe gonna see like um, uh, Unreal Engine 5 based games running on the Xbox Series X that really showcase the capabilities of this game engine, but you know, maybe now it's just too early to tell. And of course, some companies have their own kind of a reasons why they want to keep uh, use their own engine, uh, you know, can easily because they own it, they, they develop it, they can easily optimize it. And of course, we, I think if you use Unreal Engine, you need to can pay some revenue to uh, Epic Games, uh, you know, the developer of this engine. Again, there are probably some things related to this, but again, I'm not getting into details because I didn't do research about it. But bottom line is that I think that when we're gonna see games developed with Unreal Engine 5, some of them probably be gonna blow our mind because that tech demo, real-time tech demo, was just crazy and we all know that the xbox series x is even more powerful than playstation 5 so just expect when we can see when we're going to see a game that really utilizes the power of this game engine should be crazy now of course when we consider graphic fidelity of course there are going to be games that just look different right they won't they won't even need all this power in order to deliver a really great gameplay experience the graphics is not everything and of course some people Although they prefer realistic games to some in some genres, there are many games that just won't look like it. They're going to look cartoonish and again, probably going to use very low poly models. And still, this is the type of game that the games that the developer wanted to create. So again, we are just talking about kind of uh, the capabilities uh, that the next gen consoles can deliver uh, in uh, next gen uh, games and something that we can actually play when the console launches. And maybe even a bit further down the road. It doesn't mean that if the uh, console launches, we're going to see like uh, all this crazily optimized game for the console. I think even for the PS4, uh, we've seen like the best quality games just I think like a year and a half, even two years after the console was released. So again, it doesn't mean that uh, you should be kind of uh, disappointed with uh, the console because the console itself is powerful and there are really great game engines there. It's all about the developer kind of, you know, maximizing uh, the benefits of both the hardware and the game engine, the software, in order to deliver really something special uh, using kind of the latest technologies to create next gen experiences. And even from what we've seen in the Xbox game show, again, you need to understand this is too early. They're probably going to be seeing new announcement coming in uh, maybe soon. And of course, they're going to be games releasing in 21. It takes some time to develop games. Come on. Uh, you won't see everything day one. And those games are probably going to be very impressive and developers are working on them right now. Uh, and probably they want to show us what they're working on. But again, it's too early for them to showcase anything right now. So I think we just need to be a bit more patient. Now, the other thing is expectations and well, I need to tell you that my expectations are high because after reading, you know, how much powerful the console is and seeing the capabilities of you know, Unreal Engine 5, for example, um, I really do want to see something different, right? I don't want to see something that is kind of look like or plays like or feels like core engine consoles, right? You want to see something different. Uh, and of course, this we're going to see with games that are optimized uh, or even console exclusive, launch exclusive for the Xbox Series X1 that will deliver on this promise of amazing action games. But, and I don't want to say it, but I want to say it anyway, graphic isn't everything. And uh, still, we know that the console is powerful. We know there are really amazing game engines that were designed to utilize the power of these next gen consoles. So we're definitely going to see games that will look even better. Even the current, uh, the next gen games that we've seen, they will be optimized for the platform. We're gonna see 60 frames per second, 4K, and ones that actually you know look even better. I mean, we're gonna see it for sure. The question, you know, how much they can actually push 
uh, and take advantage of these capabilities to really deliver something different and uh, maybe we're going to see new genres emerging for this uh, uh, amazing powerful capabilities of both their new game engines and uh, console hardware but that yet to be seen and we're going to wait and going to see what happens still i'm optimistic to be honest and things looks good i don't think things look bad uh thing looks good yeah, but again, I may have expectation like you to see things kind of, uh, you know, things to blow me away, you know, because when I see, if you look now with all the kind of a gameplay uh, videos that I sh show you, uh, you know, you do think that things like look kind of uh, like next gen? I don't know, just look like a kind of a uh, Xbox uh, One uh, demos, to be honest. Nothing they can say like, wow, what is this? This is a big leap. No. Still, I do expect improvements and do expect to see some game that really pushed the envelope and kind of a, uh, uh, developers making really impressive game that looks both visually expressive and are very immersive to play uh, and also kind of uh, uh, create uh, games that redefine different genres. Well, other than this, uh, well, I want to hear your opinion because for me things are quite good and quite okay. Uh, I'm not kind of a very disappointed. I know. I've read your comments and I see that many uh, people are disappointed with what they've seen. But I try to find reason because, again, the, the goal of the developer is to deliver those amazing experiences. They, they, they won't do it to create some kind of a, uh, things that looks kind of bad. They probably have reasons why some, some games are degraded in terms of visual quality. Uh, but again, it's still early to judge, of course, because some of those games are probably, this is early builds of the game and it's going to be further optimized. But the thing is that the goal of the developer is to deliver those amazing experiences. And maybe we don't see the whole picture, right? As I told you, maybe things will be added in the future. Uh, some games kind of uh, developers want to give them, uh, leave themselves enough room to add more content to the game later on. So they, <coughs> they won't optimize the game to the maximum capability of the hardware. Well, again, we need to wait and see. So what's your opinion? I want to hear that. Uh, uh, are you disappointed? Do you think what you see in the Xbox Series X graphics sucks? Uh, how do you see all this in terms of the new game engines that are coming? Uh, the tech demo that we've seen for Unreal Engine 5? Uh, the um, Xbox Series X uh, uh, game previews that we've seen, all the reveals videos. What's your impression about all this? And whether you're happy, disappointed? Do you think we just need to wait a bit longer to see something really, really special? Well, let me know in the comment section below what you think. Uh, this is for this video. Uh, I'm going to see you on the next one. Consider subscribing to my channel, liking this video. I'm going to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching everyone. Have a great day. Cheers.